The individual is now a personal newsroom. It's a media center in its own right. The individual can be an agent in how you mobilize and organize other people. And then the question becomes, how do you enable people to do something that is relevant and useful? The primary driver of civic participation in any community is need. You do it because you see a gap and you need to address it. The secondary driver is a type of moral concern, the sense of global citizenship that characterizes many millennials. The three-year-old Syrian boy Ayan Kurdi who drowned generated such an enormous outpouring of public grief that within hours hundreds of thousands of people had signed a petition to put pressure on the Prime Minister whether or not people felt comfortable about that image being shared so widely. It has the potential to change policy. But most of the time there's that nagging suspicion that most people don't feel very connected to the issues they care about. For example, signing a petition, donating money are not particularly meaningful actually in terms of supporting frontline activists on the ground. What we're trying to do there is think about civic participation in a much more individualized way. Tap into the potential of these distributed networks that really characterize modern day activism and are enabled by technology trends that come out of consumer markets, so live video, uh, task routing APIs from the on-demand economy, smart calendaring, and say, why not make sure that's the tool you use to connect you to the civic participation that you care about. There is now quite a rise of um, people who call themselves digital humanitarians. And this is, I think, a very interesting space where you could see social media being very productive in humanitarian relief efforts. Civil society experiment with new forms of participation. Governments should embrace this experimentation as well, because if governments do not do that, it will happen just like the music industry. Innovation will be made in spite of that.